Well, that's it. After years of effort, I'm finally giving up on trying to fix cheap, used, two-stroke sh**. The carbs always gum up, the gaskets disintegrate, filters clog, and the compression is always low. Since everyone's going to lithium-ion for stuff like this, the low resale value on these makes genuine replacement parts not an option. The only way to avoid mechanically totaling it is to use Chinese knockoff parts that never work anyway. Actually, hold up. This engineered fuels $20 a gallon, so before I put it out to the curb. I paid less than 20 bucks for the whole blower. Reveling in the sense of accomplishment is the main reason I even attempt to get those old two strokes running. I'm the kind of whack job who will accomplish something that wasn't even on my to-do list, and then I'll retroactively add it to the list just so I can enjoy the feeling of crossing it off. So, while new tool time is usually a joyous occasion, this one is tainted with the stench of failure. I'm hoping that, for 170 big ones, not including even a small battery, this isn't just a fancy black and red plastic tube with a cheap drill motor inside. I've read and watched all the reviews, and by all accounts, this is a middle-of-the-pack blower. I don't really care about that. The three questions I just want answers for are A, is it just a fancy black and red plastic tube with a cheap drill motor inside? B, do you have to use the pricey big boy batteries or can you get away with the little guys? And C, is it worth the money? Blip. 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 And bleep. Oh. Yeah, you think you're smarter than me, huh? Oh, wait. <laughs> you are. Getting them undressed is simultaneously the most challenging and the most rewarding the first time you do it. I'm talking about power tools, of course. This thing is a smorgasbord of industrial plastics. First course consists of a perennial favorite, the always lovely PA6 GF30. It's the glass fiber reinforced plastic that gives a quality feel in your hands. For the second course, we take a step in a disappointing direction. The entire body is made from ABS. It creates an unwelcome feeling of thriftiness. Not the best choice for the body of an outdoor power tool. It is very rigid and has good impact resistance when warm, but it has a tendency to get brittle in the cold and tolerates UV exposure like a pale-skinned engineer. <clears throat> it's nice that the trigger guide pin isn't plastic, but the retainer is molded into the ABS body and look, it's already got stress marks. Credit where credit's due, Milwaukee did put one nice feature on this body. I'm glad a company finally has the balls to tell women and hippies not to use their tools. <coughs> the third course is the even thriftier polypropylene. What it lacks in rigidity, it makes up for in ductility and flexibility. It may scuff or tear, but it's lighter than ABS and is more likely to bend than crack. The turbine housing is also ABS, but that's fine because it's mostly protected from UV exposure anyway. Once all the plastic bodywork is out of the picture, you can see where your $170 really goes. Doesn't look like much, but I'm seeing some serious power here. Way more than even the mighty M18 high torque impact we took apart already. The turtle and bunny settings, as well as the LED indicator, are crammed onto this little interface board. You can tell by how thin the wires are that no real power goes through here, just communication signals. Still, it's always good to reinforce wiring wherever human interaction is anticipated. The trigger switch looks familiar, but there's some weirdness here. It's got this beefy diode here to protect the switch from flyback voltage spikes when the motor suddenly stops, so it makes sense. But why wouldn't the half-inch impact need one too? And this is odd. It looks for all the world like a reverse function. Does this thing have potential for blowing and sucking? Questions for later. Tech tip for defeating little plastic retainer clips without breaking them. Just a little heat to soften them up when you pry on them. Assuming, of course, that you actually plan on getting it back together ever again.
Well, there's the reverse switch, hooked up to absolutely nothing. Must be vestigial. Surely this plastic switch housing is used on a bunch of things. Oh, well. Little booty to keep leaf dust out, which I don't recall the M18 impact having. Maybe it does, I don't know. I love that thing too much to take it apart again to find out. This motor driver board is what has me believing how powerful this is. Six MOSFETs and this aluminum heatsink is huge. Gotta get this grate off. Keeps foreign objects and foreign dogs from getting sucked into the intake. These magnets feel way stronger than the ones and other brushless tools I've torn into. This motor's mean. No wonder it can drain a fully charged battery and, well, you'll see. Remember in that other video where I said my lawn tractor was about as useful as an 11 millimeter socket? And here we have our fourth and final course. I saved the best for last. Poly freaking carbonate. Polycarbonate's tough. It's flexible. It's good for a bullet resistant glass. It's good enough for the F-22 Raptors canopy. And it's sure as hell good enough for a leaf blower fan. <laughs> what the hell is this for? You design a blower that can generate 450 CFM at 120 miles an hour, put the motor directly inside the fan, and, oh, we'd better put a little fan on there so it gets some air. I'm going to give the engineers the benefit of the doubt on this. Economy of scale, yada, yada, yada. But it's like bringing an air conditioner to Antarctica. You could just put some ducts on the motor housing and it would pull in all the cooling air it needs. No surprise here, six thick boy field windings and three Hall Effect pickups to communicate with the motor driver board and keep the timing right, yada yada yada. Little bearing here, and another one here. I don't expect much lateral load on these, so it shouldn't take too much of a beating, which is good because the bearing housing is plastic. I actually know what this is without having to Google it. When you pull a large volume of air through a staticky plastic tube, it generates a huge static charge. This keeps it grounded because circuit boards do not tolerate static discharge. So open up your eyes, I got a big surprise, it'll feel alright, you know I want to make your motor run. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How much would you pay me to stick my tongue in there? Don't ever take something apart for the first time without taking pictures. You'll never get little stuff like this just right. I like my wire insulation like I like my women. Silicone. No, 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 no. I meant strong and resilient. Nah, it's alright. My wife doesn't watch these. Let's see how quickly this jet engine can drain a 2 amp hour battery. And it's dead. Let's see if the 8.0 can give Old Glory a proper blow. Fully charged, ready to go.
So, to answer the questions, A, yes, it is just a fancy black and red plastic tube with a drill motor inside, but I find these little induction drive motors so damn neat that I just can't be upset about it. Secondly, yes, you have to use the pricey high amp hour batteries unless you just want to blow the leaves off your windshield or sidewalk or something. Finally, is it worth the money? Well, yes, but only if you're already trapped, I, I mean invested, in the Milwaukee battery system. Otherwise, you need to spend close to 100 bucks on the battery and the charger, and for that money, hell, I would just buy a non-broken two-stroke.